Hi, it's Christine from the European Startup Association, and I'm here with John Oakland from Tribe First, one of our members and previous speakers at our European Startup Festival. He's an um, expert in a lot of fields, I would say, but especially in the crowdfunding. But I'm going to let you introduce yourself. So, John, over to you. Introduce yourself, maybe, and uh, what you do. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, thanks for having me. So, um, as Christine said, I'm a, I'm a crowdfunding consultant, for want of a better word. Um, although, really, I'm a marketer who helps companies that are thinking about crowdfunding to maximize the opportunity of what is effectively a very public uh, fundraising round. Um, so we have helped over three Tribe First, um, we have helped over 75 companies raise um, in excess of 35 million pounds, um, mainly through equity crowdfunding, that's our, our, our specialism. Um, uh, I'll talk a bit about kind of rewards and equity and the differences um, very, very sort of briefly. Um, yeah, our, our specialism is equity crowdfunding because we feel it's uh, when, when your tribe, you know, the people that love you, the people that are backing you, uh, actually own shares in your company, then they're far more likely to um, <clears throat> do all the great things that, that your tribe should do, like share by word of mouth and uh, become a customer, one of your better customers, and all these great things that, that come with crowdfunding. So that's what we help them do. <clears throat> we, um, uh, we do it through two ways. One, through a kind of managed service where companies will outsource a large part of their crowdfunding and would run a sort of symbiotic marketing and PR campaign alongside their crowdfunding campaign. Um, and the other way we help is through running um, branded accelerators. We run these with um, big companies like uh, Virgin Startup and Grant Thornton and, and various people like that. So uh, the one that we're really pushing at the moment is called Crowdboost, which we run in partnership with Virgin Startup. So we're running five of those a year from now. So um, anyone thinking about crowdfunding, shameless plug here, um, take a look at uh, Crowdboost. Why do you think is crowdfunding a really good way to raise funds for um, startups? There's a lot of ways out there, obviously, to, to raise funds. There's maybe you have some savings, uh, maybe you have friends and family, you can find investors um, uh, step out, out of um, this kind of crowdfunding campaign. But uh, crowdfunding really has taken off over the last few years. I mean, it's around for a while now, but I think for the last few years, it becomes, uh, it became more and more popular. But at what stage, um, oh no, what, um, why do you think crowdfunding is a good way to raise funds? <laughs> um, yeah, that, that, that's a really good question. And, um, you know, a lot of people I think come into it with, with very uh, sort of rose tinted glasses and they think that it's an easy way to raise money. They think that it's, um, a guaranteed way to raise money and they think that there's all these other benefits that sit around it so a lot of people may be coming to it for the wrong reasons um, so I spend a lot of my time speaking to people about what the right reasons for crowdfunding are you know the biggest thing about um, uh, startup founders um, is that they massively underestimate the time the, the cost and time it takes to raise money yes. um, and you know historically it would take you know, out of every 12 months of a founder's life, it would take three months of, of their, you know, so effectively um, a quarter of their time, it would take purely just trying to raise money. And the cost of raising that capital would be anywhere from sort of 20 to 30%. And, and founders don't realize that, they think it's gonna, their expectation is that it will take, I don't know, two weeks at most, um, and that maybe the most, the highest cost of raising capital will be maybe 5%. So it's, it's very, when, when founders coming in from that kind of massive misconception gap, you know, often uh, crowdfunding is seen as an easy way of raising money and a cheap way of raising money. So that kind of almost endorses their belief that it's going to be, you know, 5% in two weeks or whatever. And that's all they're going to need to do. So I, th I feel like companies should go into crowdfunding for the right reasons. You know, assume it's going to take longer than other ways of raising money. Some of those examples you gave, uh, raising from friends and family, from, from angel investors, but the benefits far outweigh having just a few people that are financially invested in your company, having essentially hundreds of people that are financially invested in the success of your company. It stands to reason that's really going to benefit you. You know, this is, we, we call it your core tribe. These are the people that really care about you, um, care about you so much that they kind of paid to be part of your inner circle, you know. And, and all the statistics show um, that, uh, you know, the benefits are, are massive. You know, we hear these sort of statistics such as, um, companies are, or, or, or investors, crowdfunding investors are 400% more likely to um, remain a customer of the, the, the company that they've invested in. 
via crowdfunding, um, they're 500% more likely to uh, tell a friend about you, to refer you in. Um, you know, and it's, and it's partly, I think, if you think about the mindset of a crowdfunding investor, of course they want to make a financial return. But the reason why rewards platforms like Kickstarter and Indiegogo do, do pretty much just as well as the equity platforms like Cedars, Crowdcube, Investor, and, and all the American ones, um, the reason that they kind of do just as well is because people really want to tell their mates down the path that they are involved in this and they backed it and they helped it happen. And, you know, I think equity works better for rewards because, you know, by owning shares in the company, this is the difference between equity and rewards is rewards you give stuff. You know, you, you backed me, so I'm going to give you a discount code or the, the product before everyone else or we're going to do a special range in green rather than the usual blue or whatever just for crowdfunding backers. <laughs> That's a rewards campaign. Yeah. Um, and it's great for certain things, it's great for like arts, for arts projects, it's great for uh, very high margin item um, like hardware products where you know you can afford to heavily discount but still make money. Um, that's where rewards crowdfunding is really good for, but it actually excludes quite a lot of um, the market. It excludes people that are creating apps, it excludes people that are maybe opening restaurant chains um, or um, you know food and beverage companies where it's hard to fulfill rewards like that when your margins are actually quite tight already. So you can't give your margin away to backers, um, then you can start to sell some of your equity. And that's, and that's where equity crowdfunding really comes into its own. And, and we actually, we used to support both. We kind of moved away from, from rewards and focused on equity because you know, we just found that our ability to create impact for these companies was so much greater on equity campaigns. And it kind of stands to reason on a rewards campaign, you, you know, someone might come along and buy, you know, let's think like the Oculus Rift was, was one of the most successful crowdfunding campaigns of all time but it's still quite a fleeting relationship you buy you buy the product once and you get your vr headset you know maybe in five years time <laughs> you don't get it now you get it in five years time when they finally technology's finally caught up and you get to tell your mates that you were one of the first people to own an oculus rift that's pretty cool um however oculus rift sold to facebook and you know if that had been an equity campaign just imagine that vast tribe of people, that all those backers, there's thousands and thousands of backers that had bought an Oculus Rift on, on, on advanced order. If they'd been shareholders in Oculus Rift, they would have financially benefited from the sale to Facebook. That would have made them such greater loyal customers. In some senses would have made Facebook, you know, probably would have driven the value up because Facebook would have been either requiring this tribe or, or buying them out, but then you know, making a bunch of people very, very happy and warm and fuzzy feeling yeah. about Oculus Rift far more likely to tell their mates about it, far more likely to use some of that money to buy the latest Oculus. You know, all sorts of amazing things would have happened. So I think yeah. rewards are good, it has a place, but, but we, um, we operate in the, uh, in, in the equity space mainly. And, and, and so, yeah. you know, that's kind of, hopefully you've got a bit of a sense of the types of companies it works for. Um, you know, people that, uh, people that have got a tribe already and you're looking to sort of monetize that community in a sense and bring that community on, have a, a form a deeper relationship with them. So that works really well. You know, this is why Brewdog has been the most successful crowdfunded company of all time, has over 100,000 investors, about 120,000 investors. Away. Yeah. And that's because they gave their community an identity. They, they called them punks. And um, they had that community already. They had people buying their beer. And they tried to go and raise money from everywhere. They tried the Dragon's Den, didn't even get past the producers. They tried venture capital. You know, angels couldn't give them enough money. And in the end, they went, we've got a great community. Let's, let's go and ask them if they want to invest. And you know what? 120,000 of them did. That's, that's when it works really well. Not, not when you're kind of a brand new startup, you don't know anyone, you haven't got a great network. Um, maybe then you need to go and find one or two angels that are well networked that are going to fund uh, funds you know, and believe in you and believe in your vision. Um, that's possibly a better route for you. But once you have a small fledgling community or there's a group of people out there that, you know, early signs are saying are really going to be supportive of what you, what you do, then equity crowdfunding is absolutely perfect for you. Yeah, I think it does. And even some more information and tips in there, which is great. Um, thank you for sharing that. Uh, I have a couple of more questions for you, but I'm going to keep that for part two of our interview. So everyone stay tuned for part two, where we're talking about top tips for crowdfunding and also um, when... Um, when should startups start thinking about crowdfunding, even though you already started answering that kind of stuff. So it's great. So I'll talk to you in the second interview. Thank you for your time. Thank you.